Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're going to take one of our quick looks at Feather Heroic. Feather Heroic refers to A, the card Feather the Redeemed, which is a new card. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control, exile that card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. And the other part, Heroic, refers to a deck that used to be very popular in Theros block, which the ability Heroic meant anytime you target a creature with Heroic with a spell, it got bigger. And we have some cards that sort of work that way. The 10th District Legionnaire is here, and whenever you cast a spell that targets the 10th District Legionnaire, put a plus one plus one counter on the Legionnaire and scry one. What both these want are spells that target your own things. And here are some spells that target your own things that do cool stuff. Defiant Strike is a plus one plus O oh instant for one mana, but you also draw a card. So when you target your 10th District Legionnaire, it becomes a 3-3, if it's the first time you've done this, and you draw a card. If you have a feather on the battlefield, you return the Defiant Strike to your hand to play again later and draw more cards. Then we have Sheltering Light, which gives a creature indestructible and scries one. Great for keeping your creatures alive, and with feather you can keep bringing it back and scrying more. And we have Reckless Rage, which does four damage to a creature you don't control and two damage to a target creature you do control. So if you choose to target your Legionnaire, your Vanguard, or your feather, the rec and your feather is on the battlefield, it will exile and come back to kill things the next turn. It can grow your 10th District Legionnaire, and your Adanto Vanguard can gain Indestructible, making it uh, survive the Reckless Rage. The rest of the deck is a bit of Boros Angels. I did have to cut a card that's really hard to cut. That's History of Benalia. I didn't think it quite worked with the rest of the deck. That may be a mistake, but since Feather the Redeemed is an angel, keeping the angel package seemed better to me. So we have three Lyras, three Aurelias, two Resplendent Angels, and four Feathers to run the angel gauntlet. And we have Deafening Clarion, just a one of to get them. Same with Ixalan's Binding. And I have two copies of Gideon Blackblade, which doesn't really play with all these kind of things, but it is something else you can use with Reckless Rage. And the Life Gain, you can give a creature Lifelink with the plus one. That can uh, come up big with Resplendent Angel, making that card trigger. So. Gideon Blackblade getting the nod here as a two of to see how it plays in this type of deck. Minus six, of course, exile target non-land permanent can also save us from a few various shenanigans the opponent might get up to. The mana's the mana is slanted to white. It might need another guild gate or two since we're not really playing anything on turn one to make sure that we can play our double white spells more often. So if you wanted to make an adjustment, maybe adding more guild gates is right, but I really hate drawing a guild gate when I need to play my Aurelia or my Lyra. So this is what we're going to roll with. Let's see how it goes. This hand has a Reckless Rage, a 10th District Legionnaire, and a Feather, and two White Sources, plus the Aurelias. We'll keep it. We have to draw land. If we don't draw land, it could be sad. We're up against Ghost, straight out of Game of Thrones. Has anybody seen Ghost lately? Spoiler. Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. Not a spoiler. Haha. -ha. For those of you Game of Thrones fans, little reference. So... A quick update, again, these will be shorter videos, just showing a game or two. It's also going to be best of one to keep it simple. This will be going on for about three or four days as I'm trying to pre-record these so I can be out of town for the weekend. And then we'll get into some deeper analysis on the decks when I get back. My goal is just to show you some games with the new cards and uh, maybe get to show off their abilities a little bit. Now, will we get an opponent who also wants to play with me? I guess it doesn't matter, because uh, I can keep talking. So, uh, once again, best of one, we're going to do that for with a few different decks that I think were pretty neat coming out of the release event. They'll be pretty short videos, probably 15 to 20 minutes as opposed to my longer form content. And then probably by Monday, Tuesday next week, you should get start seeing more regular, the, the videos you've kind of come to expect from me. That is, of course, assuming all goes according to plan with my editor and with my schedule and all that stuff. Thanks for being patient with me as I figure out my darn life. All right, planes, go. What have you got? 
I also did make my paid walled set review video available to all. That is not a mistake. You don't have to feel guilty watching it. Go ahead and watch my War of the Spark Part 2 set review. I decided to make it public. I have, to those of you who supported the channel or joined because of that, I'll have more exclusive content for you in the future. Thanks for joining. If you feel wronged by this in any way, I do apologize. I think it was the right thing to do after some backlash, and I'll continue to make some exclusive content for the supporters in the future. So turn two, 10th District Legionnaire coming at you. Too bad I can't bolt the bird. Gotta have a creature on the battlefield. That's one of the drawbacks to Reckless Rage here. But our opponent with a turn one Llanowar Elf, will it be something scary on turn two? We've got a Pelt Collector. If we draw the land for Feather here, it's gonna be really good. Like, kind of absurdly good to start killing stuff with Reckless Rage. If we draw two mountains, it'll be even better. But instead we miss. I don't know if or how the opponent will block the legionnaire but i definitely need to scry one and i feel like i should just use it to shoot something and i don't want the damage to be on the legionnaire next turn so i think i'm going to do it during my main phase and i think that killing the pelt collector is probably the right move although killing the elf is certainly justifiable we know our opponent has their next land drop but if they have a null hide ferox we could be out of the game too quickly and right now this will be bigger than both attackers. I don't want to attack with it and try to ambush because the two damage that goes on the Legionnaire means it would trade with anything that blocked it. And the card is too important for that. So I'm going to take out the Elf. That might be silly. It really depends on my opponent's hand and I don't know enough about their hand to make a perfect call here. So I have to accept that my call is not going to be perfect. We scryed the Adano Vanguard to the bottom because we need a land and we need it now. All right, well, our opponent shocked themselves anyway, which implies a Gruul Spellbreaker. Let's see what they do. There's the Spellbreaker. Now, does it become a 4-4? It does. Does Pelt Collector wish to attack? Yes. Well, no blocks here. And I still can't draw the land, so what I should have done is put a stop on my upkeep to try to scry the land to the top since I knew I wanted to play this Reckless Rage anyway. So that was a mistake. Uh, I gotta get back to using new cards. Um, this has a double two abilities. This will have trample and will become a 4-4. It might get even bigger, but I still think the Spellbreaker is the right target. And there's the land. So I could have drawn that this turn. It was a huge mistake not to play Reckless Rage on my upkeep. But here we are learning. Now if the opponent attacks with the 4-4 Pelt Collector, I think I'm in for a block. Okay. Pelt Collector is still getting bigger and bigger. This is pretty frustrating. All while I'm mana screwed. Well, we'll take this block instead then. Since the opponent's going to throw that in there. They say oops. They didn't mean to attack with that. Well, there you go. So we're going to shock for two and play feather. The opponent... It's not even that good now that we spent the Reckless Rages, but I think we had to. So we need to draw, what, another Reckless Rage off the top or something to grant Indestructible, one of those instants. We'll also have Gideon Blackblade. Is the right play to double block this Pelt Collector? I don't think so. We could go for something like that, but at this point, I need my bodies on the battlefield and I need to draw perfect. If my opponent just got rid of my feather, it'd be a bit of a train wreck. That is not perfect. So the only real play we have here is Gideon Blackblade. Gideon can hand out some lifelink and some indestructible, but only for this turn, which is a real bad look when we, nothing here has vigilance. I will lend you my strength. So we could attack and go up to nine, but it doesn't really matter here. I think we're just mana screwed out of this game too early. So we'll wrap that one up. Let's try again and see if we can draw land number three and if I can remember when to scry. Well, we can try this hand. We have the Sheltering Light to try to scry our way to a mountain, and we have two Adanto Vanguards, which some matchups, they just win. So we'll give it a shot. And there's the mountain right off the top, like a boss. I like playing the Adanto first. I like to hold back the Legionnaire till I can protect it with the Sheltering Light. And a Dreadhorde Invasion. Our opponent is going to start with the 
Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, lose one life and amass one. Whenever a zombie token with power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink. So we don't have to worry about the six or greater part for a while. And honestly, that's not going to do a great job in battling against this Vanguard and this 10th District Legionnaire. So we're off to the races. I don't think that we want to let down the sheltering light shields. I'm pretty sure our opponent will have some removal spell that we're going to want to respond with with sheltering light. So I'm not going to play Defiant Strike yet. Those 1-1s one -ones will be decent blockers, basically meaning that some of our creatures only get through for one each turn. And here is Tybalt, which says opponents can't gain life. Minus two, create a 1-1 one -one devil token. Okay, good old Tybalt here in War of the Spark. Show us you're alive. Oh, they're so cute. So cute indeed. So do we, I think since our creatures aren't going to get through easily anytime soon, we can Defiant Strike now. This will get us a scry and a draw and try to hook us up with the cards we need. More land is not it. That can be very good. Gideon Blackblade can be very good, but I like it best in combination with the Angel. So I think the play this turn will be to play the Angel and protect it with Sheltering Light. In the meantime, let's send our creatures and see how the opponent wants to block. Do I attack Tybalt? I have a feeling the opponent's going to block the Vanguard anyway. So if I'm going to end up paying the life, I may as well work on the board presence. But I think they'll definitely block if I attack the Tybalt. So that's what we'll do. We'll send them over here. The opponent will have to trade both their creatures to get a 1-1 Devil, and they'll get another Dreadhorde Invaded creature next turn. It's not a terrible deal for them. It looks like they're deciding... Nope, they're not going after the Legionnaire. Okay. Let's go ahead and pay with Adanto Vanguard and let the damage occur. The devil will target face is the only thing that makes sense now. And we have to make sure that Auto Tapper doesn't screw us over, so I'm manually tapping the Mountain to leave a white mana up for sheltering light. And we need a way to pump our creature like one more time. So we'll see what our opponent does here, but we can get another angel if, for example, we can get our 10th district legionnaire up to a 5-5 and give it lifelink. And the opponent's saying go. So I'm tempted to try to use the sheltering light to get it there, but I can do that at instant speed on my turn too. Feather. Oh, that's what we want to play. Heck yes. Let's try to get that on the board now. So that if the opponent has a removal spell, if they play it when Feather is on the battlefield, we get the Sheltering Light back. I think we head face. Now Tybalt isn't really doing much. I mean, it says that we can't gain life, but we're not trying to gain life this turn. We'll have to deal with it next turn. I wonder if I should just get it off the battlefield now, though. Probably. Probably should get Tibble off the field now so the life gain thing can work in the future. Because if we ignore it, Tibble will sit here forever. We do have to smash it. Alright, where the devil gonna be? Devil in front of Legionnaire, it looks like. Now this says whenever it targets, whenever you cast an instant sorcery, that targets exile instead of putting it in your graveyard as it resolves. So it does have to resolve, or this ability doesn't work, is what I'm gathering. All right. Opponent blocking with the devil, and not the amass creature. I mean, is it time for an instant speed removal spell? I would expect one. But I would have thought they'd do it in response to the feather. Because, yeah, anyway. The devil will deal a damage to something. They can turn it into four damage if I pay for this, but I'm, I'm definitely going to pay for it. I like my board presence, I like my position in the matchup, so paying is fine with me. And we'll end the turn. And now the opponent, pointing a Bedevil at Feather in response. Let's use a Sheltering Light to protect Feather. And there's a Gideon on top that we don't need. It's a redundant copy, so we'll scry it to the bottom. Bedevil will fail. And Sheltering Light should return to me at the beginning of the next, since this was done in my end step, it should return to me at the beginning of my turn. Which, let's put a stop on upkeep and decide whether or not we're going to use the Sheltering Light to scry. Because uh, scrying during our upkeep 
or a double scry with sheltering light on the 10th district legionnaire could be really good the opponent using a cast down here to take out the angel unfortunate we didn't get to see the shiny Gideon plus Angel going off. You also do need something with 5 power or another way to gain life for that to work. So here's Sheltering Light returning to the hand. I think I can anticipate that my opponent doesn't have another one of these since they did this at instant speed. So on upkeep, let's use the Sheltering Light on the Legionnaire. This will get us two scries, one from the Legionnaire, one from the Sheltering Light. And the Feather will return the Sheltering Light to our hand. Do we want another one? Seems really good to have two. I don't think we can lose if we're just sheltering light all the time here. The 10th District Legionnaire will keep getting bigger, bigger, and stay indestructible pretty much at all times, which means we don't even want to play the Gideon Blackblade now. We just want to leave up our sheltering lights. By the way, did you check out the new board? I don't think I've commented on it yet. It's got some little toys that you can play with. So click around, get to know the area, and the opponent's going to scoop it up. Like I said, shorter videos, I've got to make a lot of them today. I hope you enjoyed this look at Feather Heroic. This is again my first take. Let me know what cards you would run, what you would change, what you would do differently. I'm very interested to, to hear from all of you on these first takes of the deck and just how good do you think the deck is? Bad deck? Good deck? I really want to know. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com. Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.